So I'm sure that a lot of people know about how we are connected in terms of emotions and thoughts. So we think something and we attract like, and we get together with the, you know, like-minded people and like-minded entities as well. So let's say that everybody in this particular group is happy. They will connect to all the groups who are happy as well in the same vibration in the same frequency and why do they connect because they are so similar in frequency right we're using these terms frequency and vibration so it makes everything easier to understand but it's just about affinity really so when you have a pattern that is very similar to another pattern they interconnect it's pretty much the algorithm of energy right so when we are on social media um what we look for and what we hit like probably is going to show up a lot more and we're going to see a lot more connections related to that one why because we connected to that we liked the same buttons we liked the same pictures we looked for the same names for the same tags so there's an algorithm being produced and things are getting connected people any being with those thoughts and emotions they do the same they attract the same they connect to the same so now i'll give an example of how we are connected and how it affects us when princess diana died what happened was that um obviously she died in a car accident and those images were passing on tv continuously and a lot of people were really, really sad because Diana was adored. You had people in many parts of the world watching those scenes and getting told that Diana died. So a lot of people felt sad at the same time. That created what we call egregore. So the egregore is a combination of energies. One particular energy that you now is connected to a lot of different beings. A lot of people were sad and a lot of people were seeing pictures of Diana and a lot of people were talking about Diana in a, in a very sad way, in a very gloomy mood and watching those scenes repeatedly on TV. I remember that. I was watching on TV and it was like the same scenes all the time. You know, it was like the scenes of the car and the scenes of the, the, the tunnel and, you know, the scenes of Diana. So what happened is that a lot of people in the world watching those scenes and talking about Diana, that endured for a while. It wasn't just one day. It was for a few days. So even if the person didn't know about Diana, right, when they were getting told about that or when they saw the images on television, they would instantly connect and then feel a lot more overwhelmed than they would if nobody was talking about Diana, if nobody was seeing that, if there was no such egregore of sadness about that, if nobody knew about Diana, right? I mean, if she wasn't famous at all, if she wasn't the, you know, Princess Diana, that egregore wouldn't be generated. Even if you didn't know who Diana was, you would instantly feel what the whole egregore the whole group of people around the world were feeling. You would feel very, very sad, right? Because you connected to that. And there's like all the scenes as well uh, that we see on TV. For example, when somebody who's famous die, right? And then the more you talk about that, you don't even know the person. You don't even know the artist or the famous person. But there are so many people feeling so bad and seeing those scenes of the person, even if, it, if they're not like gore scenes or anything, just like images of the person on the TV, right? Or talking about that person a lot. What happens is that you generate that feeling and you connect to people who are like having the same feelings about the same situation. So whoever sees that scene, whoever hears about that will connect as well and they will feel a lot worse than they would if that energy wasn't being generated. Recently, this artist died and I didn't even know this artist existed. But apparently a lot of people knew uh, this artist. This artist had a lot of fans and she died. And what happened is that when I saw her um, images, you know, images of, you know, her, etc., I was, I felt a bit sad. Obviously you feel sad when, you know, somebody dies or when something happens. But I thought I could see that I was feeling a little bit more 
vulnerable because of that. And then I, I realized that I was feeling, I was absorbing, I was connecting to this group of people, this group of thought that was feeling the same for her. Obviously, this connection happens in positive ways and in negative ways, right? So if it happens to sorrow, it also happens to um, happiness. There was the elections in the United States, you know, Donald Trump versus Biden. And the world was divided. America, especially, for obvious reasons, was very divided, right? There was like this group opposed to Trump and this group very fiercely pro-Trump, it generated these two egregores. And anywhere in the world, if you're seeing the images and, you know, a lot of people were following the elections, we instantly connected to that group. And we start feeling what those people were feeling. And we started thinking and downloading the images that those people in that big group had. So we connected to that. And the whole world is connected. And you just have to be in the same frequency or to, th in other words, you just have to think something similar and start feeling something similar to connect. And then after you're connected, you start absorbing that information. You know, it's just like a network. Remember, algorithm. It's just like a natural algorithm. Why do I talk about these examples now to mention slaughterhouses and why slaughterhouses are delaying the process of planetary regeneration, planetary restoration, and planetary transition that we need so badly, and that we've been having opportunities to, 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 to evolve so, so much, right? We've been having wars, we've been having viruses, we've been having um, catastrophes, we've been having everything in the world, right? And nothing is looking like it's, it, it's ever going to get better. Now that I talked about how interconnected we are with people, with other people, we are also connected to animals. They think and they feel. Even if they didn't think, they feel. This generates some sort of energy. We use the word energy, but you can think of like any other words that you uh, may, right? So I'm going to just say energy because it kind of englobes a little bit of what I want to say. So they exteriorates this energy, right? The feeling is around them. The feeling is in the atmosphere. It's around the planet, right? So when an animal dies or when an animal suffers, pretty much like when a person dies, suffering, being killed, right? The energy of suffering is around. And anybody experiencing something like that or anybody observing that start thinking of that and starts feeling those emotions or kind of trying to understand those emotions, they connect to it, right? So they might experience something in, in, in a way to overcome that because they're connected. Remember, if you connect to anything on you know Instagram, right, the algorithm, you start seeing more of that thing that you just looked for, right? If you hit like on, let's say, post about perfume and you know makeup, if you hit like on three of them, it's enough for your feed to be like overwhelmed with makeup and models, you know, wearing makeup and makeup tutorials and things like that. And that's how you connect. You don't even like makeup, but just because you looked for it and you hit like once, that's enough for that to come more and more and more. And the more you watch, the more you click, the more it's going to show to you. So when an animal or a person goes through a burden, right, caused by others, and they're feeling that constantly, and, and, and the emotions are really strong, like horror and agony, then there's like this egregore being created as well. The same egregore that was generated when Diana died, or any Michael Jackson, and the same egregores about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and the same egregores in the World Cup create frustration or happiness or whatever. Animals create this egregore all over the world, mainly in slaughterhouses. We need to understand that billions of animals are killed every single day. There are more animals being killed in one day than all of the wars killed people since the First World War. So there's a lot of agony, there's a lot of horror, and there's a lot of um, these energies of horror and agony and pain and despair being exteriorated into the atmosphere of this planet. So it's just hovering around. That 
keeps the planet from moving forward because then you have suffering, you have agony, you have everything which is not good. People will connect to that everywhere in the world. The world is not going to progress to a world of peace and a world of um, regeneration. People who are here, they are experiencing um, that of what other beings are experiencing. So you can't be really, let's say that you are in a house and you are in the bedroom and you are so happy in the bedroom. You can't have happiness and peace in your house if there's a murder happening in your living room or if there's like a lot of suffering. We feel that when we live in a building and the person next door is crying and suffering and really depressed, you feel that energy really close to you. You don't even know where it's coming from, but it's there. So these slaughterhouses everywhere in the world, so many um, animals, cows, pigs, chickens, horses, camels, uh, fish, many other animals in the world are being killed right now. And I'm talking about millions and millions and millions and millions per hour. So this energy is being absorbed by people. This energy is being absorbed by the masses. And we feel depressed and we feel um, agony. And there's catastrophes and there's a lot of things happening to keep, keep the whole world in this vibration of enslavery and suffering and submission and pain. We tend to believe that we have nothing to do with that because it's hidden. And then we just need, you know, the Middle East to stop, you know, with the war. And we just need, you know, some people to be fed in Africa and some other things. And the world is going to be a peaceful place. It's not going to be until we get rid of all of the slaughterhouses. Again, you can't live in your bedroom happy, fulfilled and peaceful while in your living room there's like crime happening or people suffering so for our house this planet for our house to be a, a peaceful place a happy place we need to get rid of that which is generating all of the egregore that we don't want to connect to so remember even if the person didn't know about diana when they watch the images of diana on a television they would connect and they would feel so sad that you didn't even know who Diana was, but they felt sad. They connected. Obviously, that person saw the images and they connected to Diana. But even if they didn't, the energy of the world would be really dense at that time. And normally, the energy of the world is really dense when some things like that happen. A celebrity dies or when there's a war. When we have no wars or celebrities dying or elections, we still feel bad. We don't feel like our full potential of happiness. Not that we are meant to be super happy in this world right now, but we are not meant to suffer that much either. So when we're not having wars or Diana dying or elections, we still have slaughterhouses producing suffering, producing horror. And the energy is being absorbed, right? Because it's dense. So you absorb so you, you, so you don't necessarily need to feel horror or experience horror to connect to horror, right? You just connect because it's just so much and we are here for that. So slaughterhouses are places where a lot, a lot of suffering happens. And that is just a factory of misery. It's a factory. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about something energetic here i'm not even talking about you know meat and how meat is bad for your body no i'm talking about energetically slaughterhouses are factories of energetic misery and spiritual horror and despair and all of that and everybody is going to absorb that so um this world is going through a transition has always been on transition transitioning and um, and now we have a lot more um factors going on to kind of propel this um, transition for a world of regeneration, let's say. But still, it's being delayed by ourselves. Slaughterhouses are hidden. Have you ever seen a slaughterhouse? Have, have you ever seen the building? 
it's far away it's normally in the countryside it's outside the cities they are like these massive places and they don't look like a slaughterhouse because they 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 don't say slaughterhouse outside i mean they're hidden there's no cameras in there every footage that we see of slaughterhouses they like hidden cameras from activists right so slaughterhouses are hidden are far away you know we never see how um they kill the animals we see the the animal chopped up but you don't see like the 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 queue you know for murder i mean there's no like footage only from you know hidden cameras they don't want to be killed and they see that uh fellows right they see that you know other friends animal friends dying in front of them they can't do anything about it and they will die and they will end up in somebody's play these energies are being produced in the world all the time so this world is not going to be a happy place anytime soon right anytime soon this is so important and we have to take um responsibility for that right not only is the world going to change for better when we get um, rid of um, slaughterhouses but we are also promoting something much bigger than that which is like welfare and welfare not in terms of like welfare production we need to take responsibility the responsibility is um we need to know that we cause those energy to remain on earth because when we pay somebody to kill an animal when we buy meat when we buy animal products we are financing their assassination we are financing slaughterhouses we are keeping slaughterhouses there right so we have to take our responsibility and say look i'm not going to pay for this anymore I'm not gonna do this anymore and then eventually you get away from that right that's how we start the change in the world if we change uh with our actions we won't have any participation into the situations happening like wars epidemics catastrophes and anything related to suffering and agony and despair so we are connected to the animals we are connected to the spirits as well who are still here on planet earth we are connected to them and we are connected to obviously other people so just remember that we are connected to people you can't be happy until everyone is happy around you until you are in a frequency where everyone is happy this is where happiness occurs so let's say that you are in a different dimension of the spiritual world and you are like in this frequency of happiness you see that every being in that frequency is happy equally they're really really happy and when you go to like a lower frequency you see that all of those are miserable in the kind of same way you can't have super happy and super miserable in the same frequency it doesn't exist it doesn't exist in physics or in the physics of other dimensions right everything is divided by frequency and it's a natural division it's not a god dividing things or people kind of like separating it's just the frequency you can't you can't mix oil and water right it's not because they hate each other it's because they can't naturally stay in the same place right one's going to be above the other so that's how uh happiness of course and your happiness is not subjected to the happiness of other people um it's subjected to the happiness of other beings who live in the same frequency as you in other words animals and people because we are in the physical dimension right now we are in the physical dimension this dense frequency here so from plants from stones plants animals and people we are technically in the same frequency all of us so you can't be happy when animals are unhappy in other words suffering so much you can't be happy if half of the world is unhappy so if you are rich and wealthy right now and there's like some people in africa starving you are depleted of something you are not rich you have possessions but you don't feel rich you have a lot of things a lot of physical things but there's something missing it's because you are feeling the repercussions of those who are starving right um obviously you can 
physically find yourself rich and say, I'll have everything. I've just had like a massive meal, right? But the energy makes you feel as though that is not enough, right? Why? I mean, there are several other reasons, but one of the reasons is because you are connected to the people in Africa as well. And if they are starving, you are feeling depleted of something as well. And that serves for animals and other people and other rich people. We are all connected. We are all in the algorithm, right? No matter if you believe it or not, or if you want it or not, or okay, I'll focus my thoughts on, you know, good stuff only. And that doesn't happen because you are in this frequency in here. So you are subjected, right? You are conditioned to whatever happens in here, right? So you can't just go to a place, a, a sea of sorrow, right? Let's say you go like to a, a place where everybody's really sad, protesting the streets or crying in the streets and you're really happy. And then you go there, oh yeah, I'm still feeling the same happy. No, you're not. So it's not about like what you focus only. You are conditioned to this dimension. So you will feel the repercussions. Positive repercussions or negative repercussions, right? So again, slaughterhouses, are the main culprit of this world's suffering. Remember, there are more animals being killed every day than wars uh, killed people since the First World War. So we are all connected. We are connected to people. We are connected to spirits. And we are extremely connected to animals. Either way, this planet is going to transition. Uh, either way, this planet is going to evolve. And this planet is going to change. It, it has always changed. And it's just changing again. But this change which will happen, may either happen via suffering, which is what we are experiencing now, or we can evolve, we can experience this change in a more loving way, full of knowledge and kindness. So it's up to us how we want that.